Now we've taken our panoramic shot of the garden. We're going to stitch it all together into one seamless shot. Now I'm going to use the software that came with my digital camera. As many of you will have something that came with yours if you had the panoramic feature on your camera. If not, there's plenty of free ones available for download on the internet. Dead easy to use. Simply navigate to the folder that contains your images. Select the ones you want. In our case, it's all of them. Click next and sit back and it should stitch it all together into one nice shot. And as if like magic, it appears. As you can see at the top, there's this greyed out area what it would normally cut off. But we're going to use that because it will give us a bit more height on them trees. It don't matter about the black space at the top because we're going to cut all that out anyway. And the bits of trees that are missing we can either reshape or clone back in later, at a later date. So click save. We're going to save it as a JPEG. It's quite a large JPEG but it doesn't matter because we're going to have to scale it down anyway probably to make it all look in perspective. Click OK and that should appear on your desktop. And then once it has, open it up again in Photoshop and we can start to remove all the background or the sky. It's dead simple process. Right. Now it's open up. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to add a new background layer. So we're going to go to layer, select new, layer from background. We'll make sure it's got no colour in it and click OK. This will give us a background, a blank background. Now select your magic wand tool. You can adjust the tolerance settings as so. This just gives you a wider field of pixels. You may not need to change it. Simply click and select the area you want to remove. Then press Ctrl and X. And that should cut away and chop that piece out that we don't no longer need. That's all the background. And we're going to repeat this as many times as we need to and tidy it up, get it as sharp as we can until it looks something like this. Now we we'll use our slice tool, right click in the space, select divide slices, you need to select select into eight horizontal pieces, click OK. Now we need to jump to image ready once image ready opens up we can save our images into one folder all our slices so into one folder and we'll start to build our folder so all we're going to do, once it's loaded up, is we're going to go to File, scroll down, Save, Optimized As, In the drop down box, we need to save it as images only, which will be GIF files. If you've got a PNG option, save it as PNG, it will cut a lot of time out. We'll click save, and this should leave us a folder on our desktop called images, which I say will contain all our photos. First thing we're going to do is rename it. I'm going to rename it Gearwinds. So right click, rename, and take G U E R E I N S. 
Gerwins. Gerwins. Open it up. All our images are inside our slices. And we're going to rename each one of those in numerical order. So we're going to start off with Gerwins 1. So it's G U E R E I N S, no space, 1. Repeat that again for number 2. So again, G U E R E I N S, 2. Rename it again. Do this all the way along until you've got all of your images renamed from 1 to 8 and tidy your folder up if there's anything in there that you don't need. And as you can see, we have all our images but the GIF files, we need them to be PNGs. So what we're going to do is we're going to reopen them up in Photoshop and save them all as .png. So select them, open up in Photoshop, One like let's drag them all onto Photoshop. Do them as one big. Do them all together. It's a bit rough, but I'm only showing you the basics of it. Right. Once you've got them all in Photoshop, simply select the first image. Click File, Save As. We're not going to name it because it's already named. We're going to save it as a PNG file and click Save. Now, as you can see in our folder, we have two images now of that file one's of GIF and one's of PNG. We don't need the GIF file, so simply right click on it and delete it, remove it. We only need the PNG. And repeat that with all of your photos until you're left with Gearing's 1 through to 8 dot PNG. There must be PNGs. Here we go. We've got a nice tidy folder. What we need to do now is we need to navigate through to program files. So go to my computer, click C drive, program files, scroll down until you find Stellarium. Then you need to click landscapes and there's a Gerwin's folder. So open that up. And as you can see in there, there's two extra files, Gerwin's B and this information file. We're going to copy both those. So first of all, copy this one, paste it in. Then we'll copy this Gerwin's B, which is basically the ground shot. So there, a photograph of the ground. Just copy it like for like or use the original one that's already in the folder, it depends on, on how you've done, where you've taken the photo in the first place. Once you paste that into there you should have 10 files. Alright, so it's like for like now for the original. So all we need to do now is we need to go back to the landscapes for program files. And we just need to swap the one that's in it for the one we've just created on our desktop. So to do that, we're just going to drag it in to our landscapes folder and overwrite the one that's already in it. But don't forget to back up the original one first into my documents or somewhere. 
Right. I ain't gonna overwrite it because I've already done it. So just click overwrite yes. And that should have swapped the files over. So that when we open Stellarium we should have our new background in it and it should all line up. Now you might find that when it lines up, when it's in it might be a full shot, but it's not your north's not in your north and yourself's not in yourself. You might have to rotate them yourself just simply move the numbers from each photograph along make one number two and number two number three and that will rotate it until you find the right, the right angles what you're looking for now it always seems to line up alright because I know south is there north is coming around the air and it pretty much looks good during the daylight there's a few areas that still want tidying up which I'll, in time I'll pop back into Photoshop and I'll just clean them up but the best part of it it's done we'll go back to the night time and in, as you can see in the night time it adds a lot of any of your mistakes and it makes it look a lot more realistic but more than anything you get a better perspective of the sky and what you're looking at from your point of view. Our next little mission is to do telescope control from this. So I'm going to go back now and I'm going to show you how to do telescope control.